Uh, Bogan's coming out tonight. Bogan's coming out that tonight. That guy's an awesome yeah, guy. That guy's an awesome guy. Super awesome good guy. energy, super. Yeah, I rested, super I, I rested awesome. in Cancun a few months ago. They flew me out uh, for like an NBA event, and they set up like a court on the beach. It was windy as hell, and this guy couldn't make a basket. And everybody was like, like going off on him, and it was Baron Davis, Ron Artest, Oof, yeah. a, a bunch of guys. But yeah. finally, he made one, and it was it was fun. But he's, he's in cool. amazing shape, bro. He's, he's in amazing body, shape, yeah. and he's super cool, super yeah. like he's Who's funny to be around, like, you know. He uh, he's he, uh, yeah. so his story is that he moved down to Miami. I think like he, he has a family. She graduated, you know. Like he just, you know, right, right. And he moved down to Miami, got a house, and just chilling and stuff, you know. Yeah, no, he really awesome. didn't know a lot of people. So then he's kind of like, you know, he started hanging out, you know, oh, that's and awesome. now he's starting to get part of the community and stuff. And he wants to continue growing and he wants to get into coaching. Yeah, you yeah. Know, which is good. You know, we're helping him build his website and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do awesome. some content shoots with him. Super cool guy. Super oh, cool guy. Guy had an amazing career. Yeah. Kentucky and, I mean, in the Bulls, he was. Yeah, he was. He, bro, was he, awesome. he played against us during the LeBron course, years, that, yeah, that playoff yeah, run. Yeah, he has a lot of stories about that. And he yeah, wants to talk yeah. about it. Like, he would be a good one to bring to courtside. Oh, sure. that'll be you awesome. Know? Like, I've been wanting to, I, it's just like, that's something I could, actually I could bring him here too, you know, we could talk about it like with one of you guys yeah, or something yeah. like, or even you two and him, you know, like yeah. that's fine too. That'll be awesome. Because um, you got to know about it, you know, and although, yeah, I love basketball, I'm not like, I didn't know about that. You told me about Kentucky and stuff like that. Like yeah, I'm not yeah. that deep into yeah, it. Yeah, 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 I'm kind of like, you know. I like to play it and shit. It's fun, right? Um, yeah, I got questions for that guy. Oh yeah, so, yeah. Let's I'll coordinate it. I'll that guy played in the best era. He played the Kobe days, the LeBron days. Like damn, and he was it's, an elite defender, so he guarded a lot of those yeah. guys. Yeah. You know? So I asked him one question. We were playing the other day, and I said, um, "Brother, how did you know when it was time for you to get out of the league?" Yeah. And like you know, you felt like that's it. You know, like I don't have it anymore to be here anymore. And he was like. When I tried to guard James Harden, Tuh. and he goes, and he just hit me with a you know crossover bomb, got by me, and I just like my knees couldn't hold up anymore, and I just couldn't keep up with these young guys. I assume, you know, sure, a lot goes, of guys felt like that. And he uh, goes, guarding like, James Harden, <laughs> he goes, that's it, this is over, you know. Yeah. And after that, he ran into retiring, but he has a uh, a lot of stories on the um, Bulls Heat. Uh, he played with Jakeem Noah and Carlos Boozer and all that. Like yeah. he started in the in the I think, I think he, the he Eastern rose Conference. On that team too, he right? rose on that yeah, team too. Dude, he has a lot of stories about that season. No, that's one of the best teams that Chicago has had. They yeah, won like ever. sixty games. They were the number one seed, I think. Yeah. One seed was battles. That was yeah, crazy. that was crazy. But you know what? And like during those years, you know, for for me, the LeBron years, I think was like. It'll never have. I don't think anything like that will ever happen again. You know, it's one of those things that's so unique. And to be a fan of a sports team, and that changed the city into a basketball town, like 100%, big time, for sure. big time. And to win like that for four seasons, despite you win a championship or not, bro, the roller coaster ride that they're taking you on, and that, that everybody was. I was tuned into every game. I would go to the games. And you would be down 25 points, and you're still like, we got this, bro. Four minutes left, five minutes, yeah, yeah. we got this. And it was just all about winning. The buzz that it created. I mean, I think high school basketball right now, I coach high school basketball at True North, and high school basketball right now is like the best it's ever been in Miami. Obviously, there's been a lot of really good teams throughout the history of Miami basketball, underrated because there's been a lot of ballers that have come out of here. But high school basketball, like last year, there was five of the seven classifications in the state of Florida were state champions from Miami. This year, it was four from South Florida. Like, And I think that these kids that are now in high school kind of were growing up in the LeBron, the LeBron area. Yeah. The, you know what I mean? So the buzz that it it created, I think, still lasts. I think my business is as successful as, as it is because, oh, guys just want to play ball. 100%. And I think I think that, that era, that time, like sparked that energy for basketball here in Miami. Yeah. Well, like anything else, man, winning, when you're winning, people just jump on. Look what's yeah. happening right now with the Marlins. They're like 0-10 or something ridiculous. Yeah, man. Like that. You go to the comment section and the social posts, and it's like it's bad, you know. Yeah. Like you don't want to be associated now sponsors yeah. and everything. Like that turns into like a problem for you, you know. Like if you're not winning, right? The Heat have always been known as a winning organization. Sure, we had a few years where we went down, but uh, since these guys came back, man, it changed everything. Yeah. Imagine you have the best player of all time in your city. It's the best. You yeah, know? And people want to go watch him. Like money wise for businesses, the bars were always packed. You know, right. like people are out and about spending money. You know, it oh, changes, it, cha it brings, the economy goes up, it changes everything. And then you look at us now, and it's still good, you know, it's not like that, though, you know, yeah. that you can compare, like, maybe, like, that's how, the, like, the, the Patriot fans fell, you know, right. fell for a long time, you know? I mean, it's just, 
LeBron is a once in a lifetime type player, Correct. you know. So so it's not only how good he is on the court, but just the buzz he creates with the yeah. media and everything. So so yeah, to your point, like even if we were to land uh, a top free agent or draft some player that ends up being amazing, like the buzz that the big three created, yeah. I think from like a media standpoint as well was just different, you know. Yeah, I know that, and I was like. I think people would question it was maybe like poorly executed and properly executed, like him when he set up the interview for the, um, you know, the decision. Yeah, brought yeah. money to you the know, city brother, like he's like kind of like expressed that he's regretted the way that he went about that, you know. Right. But it just created like a like a shift in the oh, in the league. I man, went. You know? I went to. Oh that. yeah, I it know. was amazing. I mean, sports is entertainment. Like yeah. you know what I mean. At the end of the day, it's something to to talk about. Something it br- brings excitement. Like. That big three, I feel like changed changed everything for basketball. Even at the NBA, every level, like you see, uh, kids at the high school, college level with the transfer portal, like they transfer like crazy. They team up, build these super teams. You see it I, in the NBA. I like like before back in the days, it was like everybody, all the stars were against each other. But then now, like you're seeing two, three stars on a team. These super teams are like exciting to watch. What well, a to like the point. NBA 2K right, in uh, Boston when once they got uh, Ray Allen and KG that was nasty and then LeBron had to do it. KD went to the Warriors like you're seeing some of the best teams ever being. Well, assembled. LeBron was the first one that did it through free agency because yeah. like you could argue that the Spurs had a bunch of Hall of Famers, but it was players that were drafted. Yeah. You know, even like like with the Celtics and and they got some guys later in their career, but that was like the first time where like a free agent LeBron chose. Okay, I'm gonna go. Team those. up with D Wade and yeah. Chris Bosh. I'm gonna go. Like it was your choice, you know. It yeah. wasn't a trade. It wasn't. And then KD did it, and then now it happens all the time. Mm-hmm. But, but it brings me back to like, I mean, which we're gonna get into now. You know, the courtside basketball league. But um, when you're young and you're playing, you want to play with your boys, you know. And I think before them, like what happened was they became friends on that trip on the USA yeah. uh, trip, you know. Yeah. And they kind of like said, "Hey, let's play together," you know. That they're all nasty at a different level, but um, so. Corsair basketball has taken, to me personally, like from what I've seen from afar, like the city kind of like by storm, I would say. Like there's been a lot of a lot of basketball leagues maybe in the past were maybe very small, unorganized, didn't have like the social uh, dominance that you guys have right now. But um, starting this league, uh, uh, what was the idea or where did it originate from, you know? Exactly what you described. Um, I mean, I'm born and raised in Miami been playing basketball since I was three, four years old. I'm 32 years old now. Um, I've played, you know, from from travel ball growing up to middle school, high school basketball here, travel ball. And then once I hit like the age of 17, I pretty much played in every league throughout the city. When I say league, I mean men's league, you know. Um, and there's been a ton of great leagues uh, that have been put together in this city. And I, and I think it kind of changed with the social aspect in terms of, you know, everyone having access to our phone, social media, yeah. and, and, you know, everything changed. But um, the leagues that you play in, for the most part, for me personally growing up was, you know, you go, you play your game, and you leave. And although it was a, it was a great experience being able to play outside of organized basketball, because the reality is once people finish high school basketball, it's very hard to play at the next level collegiately. So. Yeah. Being able to have access to an organized uh, league with referees and, and and standings and playoffs was cool, but I just had the vision always of taking it to the next level and how can we make um, everyday players feel like NBA superstars, you know? And, and that's essentially what we do um, you, with our player rankings, with our standings, with our social media presence, the highlight tapes, um, the pictures, uh, everything we do from a social aspect. It's just to give back to the players and have build that excitement of like, okay, I don't have to uh, play professional basketball to feel like a professional basketball Correct. player. And, and the far majority of, of people in general are not professionals, right? Like um, the, the, the percentage is very low, 0.1% go on to play in the NBA and even collegiate basketball. Like, yeah. So what happens to all those kids that graduate that have a – burning desire to play basketball that love the game of basketball they finish their high school career and they do not get an opportunity to play at the next level what do they do they got nowhere to play right so court side exactly (laughs) so before it was la fitness before it was the parks before which all that is great but now it's like okay you didn't go on to play college come play at court side you're gonna feel just like a college player yeah you're gonna have uh the uniforms every game is live stream like just 
the attention to detail that we put into it. I played college basketball, so I know what it feels like to have that attention. Yeah. But now you can have that attention. I mean, we have players in the league that are 65 years old and are still getting that media attention and the pictures and the rankings and their good. excitement. They're just super excited. They're texting me every other day. And, and so it's something that could last, you know, a lifetime. Like you don't have to disconnect from the game of basketball. You know, you could stay with it and, and have that excitement and love for it. So we take pride in being the funnest adult basketball league in the world. Essentially, that's our goal. That's our, yeah. our mission statement. And fun is competitive. It's not saying, you know, uh, uh, where we don't want to separate the two. It's an extremely competitive league, but that's where the fun comes. So so we want everyone to have that experience, and it's been it's been great so far. Yeah, I mean, you've done a phenomenal job from the organization of it. Uh, obviously, the passion that you have for the league in behind the scenes shows. Uh, I myself, uh, like I was telling you guys earlier when we were talking, I'm a big fan. I mean, I'm a you know park player, you know, but I've always you know been pretty good playing half court, and um, I've always wondered, like, man, I think I could have maybe played in the NBA. Yeah. And Ohuro, I used to tell myself this, bro, I just yeah, gone streaks yeah. shooting. And I'm like, I could have played in the NBA. I could have played in the NBA. And then my boys and my child would always talk shit, bro. You're crazy, this and that. But I never even tried out for. I played high school football. Right. What so school never, did you go to? I went to Ferguson. Nice. Yeah, I played quarterback over there. Uh, we were terrible. So what year? What year did you graduate? I was the first graduating class. Oh five or seven. Oh seven. Oh seven. I was in the Braddock Portables at that time. You know. Oh nice. You guys are younger than me. Though. I'm eight. Yeah. I'm eight. So I'm I'm right there with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I'm thirty six. I'm nine. I'm nine. Yeah, you're thirty two though. Yeah, you're much younger. Yeah, I turned 33 in May. Um, the age of Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then, brother, you guys start this league. I end up joining. I forgot how even. I think Ryan. You're Ryan, an OG. Ryan, bro, yeah. You from were, before, of course, that OG. From before, which I, I want to make a point later, which I've talked to you guys about before, which is something that I think is pretty cool that you're doing in the league. Um, bro, and I started playing, and I was like, Hell no, I couldn't have made this shit in the yeah, NBA, bro. Yeah. Like, I barely even play there, but I'm like, right. fuck this, bro. It's like, hard. there's people who are like, they're, they're extreme athletes, you know, and like, for somebody who just plays recreationally, go to your point that it's extremely competitive, right? We right now have a, an NBA, uh, we have NBA players that, uh, former NBA players that have been in the league, right? Yep. Um, talking about like Carlos Arroyo and Keith Bogus and these guys. Right. Robert and it's Height, just, too. oh yeah, Robert Height now plays what well, he played. And did Haywood ever play? No. Who's that? Haywood, Haywood Highsmith? Did he ever play in the No, league? he never played. He never no. played. I was trying to bring him on one year, but he already got signed. Yeah. But um, um we we went to the championship this last season, you yeah. know, uh the day Miami team, you know. Um, and then I was thinking about it and I'm like, there's two things that can happen here in this league right now, like from the perception of what I was telling you about what we talk about in the back, or at least the way I see it. It says it's 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 it's, it's good enough that it's competitive enough for ex NBA players to come in, right, which is phenomenal. Or it's competitive enough that ex NBA players can come in and get beaten. Yeah, you get me. That's so a top division. You were gonna win the league wins either or. You Correct. get what I'm saying, which is amazing. We ended up losing. Granted, Carlos Arroyo yeah, was, he got, got hurt. hurt. Yeah, he got yeah. Hurt. so that's you know it doesn't matter. We're coming back. We're winning this year. We're right, not right. sure. We, we retooled and everything too. But it's the level of excitement that the league brings. It, it, it reverberates throughout the community consistently. You know, because people love playing basketball. Correct. I mean, our if you look at our Instagram bio, we have from pros to average Joes, there's a division for you. So we take pride in that where we could have a guy, like you said, like Carlos Arroyo, which is still playing at an amazing level, although he's retired. He's just a baller, just gifted with the ball. He yeah. has a special talent he's from flashy. God. It's, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. And then we have guys that have never touched the basketball in their life that are maybe 100 pounds overweight so we have the divisions of you know the elite divisions but then we also have what we call the c-league which are guys that have never played and just want to have a good time there's guys with zero skills zero experience so we have divisions for everyone and we want to be able to cater to everybody in the community like you have a passion for basketball you want to play we got a division to put you in listen so the league is obviously very emotional you know how many teams you have right now 113. 113 teams. So it's a very emotional league. You're one of the refs, apart yeah. from playing in the league. Uh, tell me a little bit about, you know, when you see these, like, high-profile games, you know, how in tuned are you or how is it that it feels like watching these things, like, transpire? Like, I know that when, like, the ex-NBA players go, like, you feel, like, a different course, energy, you know? Like, people want to be on point. A little bit about your experience being on the court, things along those lines. When I see those games on the schedule, I always want to work them because – I bring a different uh, 
a different view to the leagues because I've been refing for for 16 years. So I've been working for I've been refing for 16 years. I graduated like I told you in 08 and I went straight into refing. So I've seen all the adult leagues that Miami has ever offered. We started uh, at MacArthur, the Jose Marti League, Miami Christian. There was one at the South Miami Community Center. I used to ref one at the Overtown Youth Center. But there's zero videos. There's nothing. Like, I can't. I, I've refed Tim Hardaway. I've refed Robert Hyde when he was way younger, wow. Carlos Arroyo. But there's no videos. Like, my favorite thing Jason about the William, league, Jay, Jay Will. So if Jay will play, no, 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 and please. if we have footage of the leagues back oh then at Miami my Day College God, or the no, Midnight All Stars, if we had footage, those are footage that will go viral. Viral. Like bro. so, uh, to us, it's this like, is 2009. Remember, he won the ring in 06. So yeah, this is only you. three years after. This guy was young. This guy was still in shape, and he trash talks like crazy. He'll pull up from half court, but there's no footage of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So. One of my favorite things of the league is that everything, you go back two years, we have every single game recorded. So when I see these guys play, I want to ref these guys because I've refed high school, I've refed college, I've refed the Miami Pro League. So those, it's my favorite uh it's my favorite thing to do to ref high-quality basketball, bro. All right, so this is a, a very, very important thing right now. Uh, and I want you to talk about that a little bit more. Um, so at courtside... I didn't even know this stuff. We always assume that the refs are just like average dudes, you know, just people that just, you know, you just, hey, like basketball, you put them to, you probably train them a little bit. I had no idea that the refs had this type of like credentials and credibility, like in this case, what you're saying right now. So for all the haters out there, Besu, <laughs> tell us one more time, what is like the level of credibility that the refs at courtside hold? I mean, I have a company called the Miami Referee Academy. I dedicate myself to training officials, to giving them a chance to work on their game. A lot of guys do high school. Some guys do college basketball. They're current cur uh, college referees, high school referees. So a lot of people complain about refereeing, but these are, the guys that complain the most have never played organized basketball. So they don't know what That's good, a good officiating That's a good is. Point. They're, they're used to the fouls in, in the street ball or in the parks or in the gyms. When you put a real referee there, you can't it do this stuff. The it changes the game. Yeah. Some of the guys are rookies. Some of the guys, we're developing them. We're getting them better. But they're all players. That's one thing about the league. Everybody that referees is a player. So they know the game. We're not just getting anybody off the street to referee. These people know how to play. They all play in different divisions. But for the most part, we have high school referees. We have college ex-college players. We have college referees. So... That's amazing. That that's what I bring to the league. I want to help. I want to help Fui out to have the best officiating in all of Miami. Because sometimes you go to some leagues and you have guys that don't really know what they're doing, and that takes away from the it game. It does. It does. And, and listen, we've we've hired officials and fired officials that don't meet the expectations. And whether it's a rookie, like Basu said, it could be a rookie, but somebody with extensive knowledge of the game that played, that coach that we know on a personal level. With a little bit of training, this person could be a, a very good official. And referees in our league are not perfect, but we're always striving to train them to send videos in the chat of, look, this call That's could good. have That's good. I didn't better. know about that. Yeah. What players don't understand and what drives me crazy is somebody drives to the basket and there's some contact. Maybe they feel like there's a foul. Maybe there's not. As an official, you have 0.3 seconds to make a call, right? Like it's you see the contact. You need to make a call. What and and a call could be either you call it or you don't. Yeah. What players do is they go back on our Instagram. You know, <laughs> we post foul, yes or no. Yes. They go back on the stream. They rewind it 150 times. They send it to their family. They send it to their friends. Okay. They send it to their therapist. <laughs> I know where this is going. Right. And they slow it down and they see it and a and a and a one second uh play. They they slow it down so much where it takes a minute to watch it, and then they're like, oh, this ref is trash. This and that. Yeah, anybody could go back and watch this yeah. uh, at slow mo and 180 times. Try being there, and in point two seconds, you got to make a decision, right? So usually, what happens is when you get these people, and you saw the crybaby list, and it's yeah. not everybody out of the thousand people we have participating we a in our on league, that crybaby list. <laughs> right? Maybe it's 10 percent of the league that is just straight up annoying, right? You get those people, and you put them to ref a couple times, and you know what they'll say? Oh shit. Damn, it's, it's it's a lot harder than I thought it was. So 
that's the point that gets irritating when the same people are just whining and whining and it's like, dude, refing is not an easy job. Yeah. You could go back and rewind it a million times and be the best ref possible. They got to make a decision in a split second. That's a good point. So uh, tell me a little bit about like, so you've said that you've had to let some people go. Correct. You know, so there, there is standards that you take, you know, what's kind of like, sure. what do you look for in like, okay, guys, like this is not working out. Like, Hey, we got to get a new ref in. This one's, you know, not going to make it. Yeah. So, so yeah, go so, ahead. So I'm, I'm in charge of the referees. I'm the supervisor of officials. The most important thing that we're looking for is game management. Okay. Everybody is play calling is, is play calling. Everybody knows what a travel is. Fouls are fouls. But game management, are you letting people disrespect the league? Are you letting people disrespect the game? That's something that we don't allow. So we want people that are going to enforce the rules, that are going to take their job serious. We don't want people walking and, you know, giving bad, bad body language. So I'm always watching. If I'm not refing, I'm watching. Me and him are always on our phones. We're checking out the games. And we just want to have a respectable league. So when we have these crybabies, we want to give them warnings, technicals. We don't want people fighting. We don't want none yeah. of the, the trash have, have you trash ever had talking. a fight in the league? I mean, we've had a couple tussles, but nothing. But never like a legit we've had, brawl. We've, we've, had, we've had a couple where, where maybe a punch was thrown, and those people are history because they don't come back. I mean, but that's interesting because usually in a court, you know, you're, it's known for like, you know, yeah, ex- temper. It's a lot different off. when they know they're going to get banned from the league and we stand on that, right? Yeah. Um, when you have a manager there constantly at every game, which we do, when we have officials that are qualified and held to a certain standard, and when everything is on video and yeah, live true. stream. So you punch somebody in the face, guess what? You're on YouTube. If that person wants to go and press charges. Oh, no, that's a big problem. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You're, everything's, you're, everything's recorded now. You can lose your job, man. Right. Like, for sure. That's how serious you're on, you're on video. So um, I think I think those standards is... And then, and then the reality is this. Like, we take pride in our officials, and, and some of them are... are are rookies that are capable of learning and getting better. But at the end of the day, like you're playing in a men's league, right? And and you're being charged a thousand dollars to to play, right? So if you do the math, you're maybe paying a couple hundred bucks, maybe yeah, less. Let, let, I think let's get something clear too. People think, and this happens. I mean, people think that just because you have a business, you're rich, bro. Uh, hey, you yeah, no. like, chill, like, man. Bro, a thousand dollars for a season for what you guys do for ten weeks. I know about businesses. I see all of them. Of course, it is very nominal. I think. I mean, they're probably gonna hate me. I think you should be charging like twenty five hundred bucks a team, bro. I agree. Like, and with the approach that listen, we're gonna charge twenty five hundred bucks, but it's gonna get better. You Correct. Know? You guys have proven that if you, like people were willing to invest more into the league, you guys would not t- uh, typically reinvest it. You know. Correct. You, I noticed that you, your approach to the business like that because of the passion you have. It's not like you're gonna go now and become you know I go buy a, a house in Pinecrest you know for ten million dollars and stuff like that. Listen, you know we always have new basketballs. We're always waxing the floor. We're always adding to our to our experience, whether it's better, um, uh, be able to create better content, whether it's adding the podcast, maintaining the facility, Correct. adding a facility. Like it takes money. All the money lot, that I make the money. is put back yeah. into the league. And and what people do that don't know business or don't know entrepreneurship is they could do the math and say, um, you have a hundred teens paying a thousand dollars. You're making a hundred thousand dollars. What about expenses? Yeah. Uh, is it Rent, free? Is light. it free? Rent, lights, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, uniforms, Referees, officiating, right. uniforms. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's cleaning it's, it's, and, and time. Rent. So that that's the frustrating part. The entitlement of like, hey, you're making a hundred grand. I'm not making a hundred grand. I believe in this. No, business but so what and, happens is this: they see that, and you know, they're gonna be like, let's just start our own league. You know, like, right? Oh, it's and it's extremely happened. profitable. You know, and like, it's happened. Yeah, and it's it, happened. Yeah. So they go start their own league, and, and you know what happens after that? Oh, so the same situation that happened with the officiating. Man, these refs suck this and that. Go ref, you realize how hard it is. You go start a league. I mean, it takes a crazy amount of of dedication, of talent in terms of being able to run a business. I don't think anybody off the street could just nope. run a business. So the talent you need with the the creativity and the marketing and then and then you know the luck you need as well is being able to find, you know, certain locations to run it and building connections and Correct. marketing. It, and staying there. A manager, your, your, if your landlord just says, hey, child, you're out. Yeah, you know, it's, so it, 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 it's it's tough, man. Running this business uh, takes a lot. And then and then being able to, to surround yourself with great people and knowing that I can't do it all. Like Besu, like officiating is his thing. He's great at it. He's great at managing his officials and training them. I'm not going to do that job. He's going to do it. And hiring people in different departments that are more capable than me, I think, is what allowed... Um, this business to grow but the only way i'm able to pay people to do certain things is by reinvesting the money so everyone in the league that thinks hey we need uh 
these officials and this and that, you're making all the money. That's that's definitely not the case. And at the end of the day, um, you want the uh, you want me to hire some NBA level yeah, referees? All right, you're gonna have to pay uh, fifteen thousand yeah, dollars yeah. a season because those guys aren't gonna work for anything less than what a couple grand, even a, a Division one college. Yeah, they, I mean, they won't do it to begin with. Yeah. Listen, how many leagues have real high school and college referees? Zero. None. Zero. 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 I, I used to be the only guy, right? And, and the high school association would not really like that I would do this. I would still referee in college. I'll still referee adult leagues. I'll still, they would call me, yo, we need you, bro, because our referees are not that good. And I would take those games just as serious as a college game because I was working on my game. I wanted to keep moving up in the in the college ranks. But a lot of these guys... They they think the refing is easy, right? So they pay less, and they get referees that are not uh, that yeah. good. So the level of play drops, yeah, because well, you're missing calls. They're they're shouting and screaming like if it's a park. There's no game management. It looks ugly, bro. Which we were saying earlier. Now I'm gonna ask you a question because this is I'm sure this is on everyone's mind. I think it's one of those things that people are gonna be like, yeah, right, and they think you're lying. Um, which to a public or to a player, it feels like it does happen, right? Oh, yeah. So you're, you're refereeing a game. Uh-huh. You have a player who's acting up, whatever. You get a cup. Is it true or that if someone gives you attitude or they're just kind of like bickering back and forth, are you more inclined to call more fouls on them or to give them the eye more to actually like, you know, in, in, in retrospect, like try to like uh, retaliate to them? Like, you're going to be acting like that? All right, bro. I'm going to be refereeing you different. <laughs> No, man, you can't do that because the film never lies, bro. True. So everything's recorded. All the, all the high school and college games that I would do, like he says, they clip every play. So if I have 10 whistles on you, the film is going to show I have something against you. I can't do that. What we try to do is talk to the players, yo, cut it out, play ball. I can't I can't have nothing against you. And let's say I tee you up today, tomorrow I ref you again, I can't bring that in. Like we're on a fresh start, you know. Like gotcha. you can't hold grudges. It's like. almost like a uh, like you have to have your your emotions. Like it's got to be more black and white. Yeah, like, I gotta call what I see. I mean, and I've seen different types of officials. Officials are humans, right? So there's some that are egotistic that want to get you back. Yeah, and then there's others that are maybe more fearful and scared. So if you get on them, then they're gonna yeah. give you more calls. What he tries to do is get officials that aren't going to get swayed either way. Yeah. So whether you're complaining or not, the next play, I'm going to call it how I see it. You know? But oh, there's, that's like the game within the game, man. Oh like God, between it's... the players and the officials, there's a lot of like, you know, going on there. People maybe don't yeah. see from afar. And, listen, you know? can, and, and let's make it clear. Can you talk to an official? Can you argue at times with an official? Absolutely. This is an emotional game. Can you get chippy with the opponent? A hundred percent. We agree on that. Well, if the problem is, is when it becomes excessive, where it, where it, ruins the experience for everybody because it's a constant complaining and whining but part of the game like we don't want robots that are mute out there this is an emotional game it's competitive like there's a lot of stakes on the line there's there's rankings there's championship games everything's on video like we want that competitive juices flowing it just it needs to be like a like there's got to be a time where you're like all right let's just focus on the game and and just and just chill out. Brother, know? we're we're human. Even me, that I have way more experience than all my other referees, I'm going to miss calls, bro. So I tell the players, yo, I missed it. I don't have a good angle. The camera is looking at over there, but I have the other side of the play where I'm probably blocked off by a guy that's 6'6". I can't see the guy reaching through yeah. you. I'm gonna, you're going to miss shots. I'm going to miss some, some calls, bro. It's part of the game. Yeah. I'm not 100%. Personally, you're not 100%. I like either. it when the refs let people play. I like you that know, too. I like that. I like Just it. let them play. You know, listen, there's going to be f- hard fouls, especially in the playoffs. You know that things just, you know, amp For up. Sure. Um, I think like, you know, calling, f- cons- I mean, if they're obvious, yeah, but calling fouls kind of like breaks that momentum in the game, you know, at times, you know. Right. The flow. So what they taught us is advantage, disadvantage. So let's say you're driving by. I might be riding you a little bit, but you play through and you get an assist. There's no need to call that, you know. Correct. But if I'm if if you can't get the pass through, now I have an advantage. We got to make a call. But I like to let people play. If you could play through the play contact, through contact, right? It's a contact sport, bro. Yeah. If I touch you by the book, that's a foul. Yeah. But we're gonna be here all night, bro. We'll yeah, be correct. shooting free throws. Nobody wants to see that. Yeah. We want to let the guys play, play through some contact. And if you got hit, but you still made the layup, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah. Not an and one. Uh, and one, you got to earn it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I, one thing that I really love about courtside, you can't foul out. So you can play aggressive defense. You okay. could play hard. The only thing is if you foul out, you're going to be in the bonus. But people are not scared to play defense and the shot clock. Like there's so many things to this league that separates us. The last five minutes of the game, we got a shot clock. So now you can't stall. Some other leagues, you pass the ball yeah. around for a minute, two minutes, you have no shot. But now the shot clock's in play. That's phenomenal. So That's a good move. It's, uh, it changes everything, bro. So yeah. part of a referee, we got to be focused. Like you know that, they, like you said, game within the game, there's a matchup where you got to have yeah. extra attention to those guys because they've been going at it yeah. back and forth, trash talking. You know, I, I, I love to ref, bro. Hey, listen, and so talk to me a little bit about the thought process that comes in. Like you just got off, you know, uh, season 14. We're in currently in season fourteen. Okay, you're currently in season fourteen. End of the season. Talk to me about how the process is with you. You say you have a committee. Like, how do you structure like the next season? You know, I think it's very interesting. How do you approve or disapprove of someone being in a certain division? You know, correct. Uh, yeah. You see people and automatically know like this guy's nasty or these yeah, guys are yeah, like you yeah, know for sure. A little bit about that process. Yeah. So we want to keep the divisions as fair as possible, and what we the benefit of our league is that since we have so many different divisions, like there's no need for you to play in a division that maybe you're too good to play in, right? There's certain leagues where maybe there's two divisions. So you have that imbalance. Um, with us, we provide uh, uh, different divisions for guys to enter. Usually it works based on experience. So like in our highest division, which is the division you guys are currently in, if a Royal wants to bring more ex NBA players and put them, we have no problem because that is the elite of the elite division. There's no boundaries to who you can bring. Gotcha. Right. Um, once we start going into the lower divisions, there's guys there with not much experience, right? In our C league, which is our lowest division. Those are players that play on a recreational level. Those are players that have zero experience playing organized basketball for the most part. Those are guys that are not in the best shape maybe have a nine to five or a family and, and they're not playing in a consistent level. So what bothers not only me, but the committee is when you got a guy that played a uh, college basketball or maybe a guy that's in really good shape or, um, you know, maybe a guy that still has one skill that's elite, they're shooting or, or their size. And then they're begging us to want to play in the C league. Nah, that doesn't to happen, us, bro. That doesn't happen. That happens. Sandbaggers. Right, yeah. so oh, we call it course. sandbaggers, and to us, it's like we're built. Courtside is built off of the competitive. But it can't be that they beg you to be in a lower division. Yeah, bro. Well, it is play. a begging when it's like, uh, "Can I play?" And then you get an answer of no, and then it's it's repetitive. And then every week, "Can I please play?" And to us, it bothers us, and we call it ducking smoke because it's like we have a division. Like if it's like, "Okay, oh, I can't play courtside because I'm too good," and there's no division for me, dude. We have three, four other divisions for you. Here, you just want to come in and have the easy route and dominate. And we're not built. We thrive off of competition and the trash talk and the matchups and earning things. Yeah. Like, everything is earned, right? So, to us, it's it's annoying when guys want to play in, in in the weaker division because we feel like they want that, that advantage. So, depending on the division, we do have a criteria that they got to meet. Um, in the C League, it's pretty much a division for all guys that – don't have that experience that aren't and that one's the one players. that grew the fastest no there's just more of course bad players yeah. than there are good players yeah. right for every carlos arroyo you have 10 million guys that <laughs> you have yeah, never yeah. stepped on a high school court it's just the reality those guys but are, do, you, do you feel like the c-league players maybe have more fun than the like absolutely the, the higher guys, impact, the higher players it gets stressful up there so hard, so man. we so we we i'm using carlos arroyo as an example because he's a legend in, in basketball and played yes. at the highest level right and and he so we're setting the bar at, at him whatever we could provide at courtside is still cool for him at his age as a retired player but he's seen all that times 10 in the NBA, yeah. right, with the media. And, and he's played in front of so, people, and all his games have been live. And- I, have, I have a quick story with him. Uh, one of the first times he was playing on the team, um, I think I forgot who we were watching play. I think it was Eddie, that he's a phenomenal shooter. Yeah, uh, Eddie Buckets. Eddie Buckets. Yeah. yeah. yeah phenomenal shooter. He was playing. And, and then, handles and everything. And, and good. Good player, man. Like, you know, and I told Carlos, hey, you think that guy could have played in the NBA? He goes, man. 
delete my phone number. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, there's levels. It's so, so, and then you really so realize hard. like the difference between like you can see some good people play, but like the NBA is yeah. just like well, it's a top, 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 it's top. The, of the world. It's the elite of the elite of the elite. Like it's it's uh, and we have and you have but, players like that coming in. And besides him, uh, I had the privilege of playing against him. But tell me a little bit about you know how Tyreek Hill got to play in the league, right? And is Tyreek Hill good at basketball? Tyreek Hill is a baller. And this is not with the standards of like, okay, how good is he as a as a superstar football player? Or how good is he as a celebrity in basketball? This is just based on the criteria of just a basketball player, take everything up. He's a baller. And what people don't know about him is that he's a phenomenal shooter. He's a lefty. So every so he's played about six or seven times at courtside. He's probably averages like eight threes a game. <laughs> There's been a game, uh, one game he had like 15 threes. He's a really, really good shooter. Super, super athletic, like in terms of his, obviously we know his speed, but his, his vert, his like vert. at five, he dunk. five nine, you know, he, he could dunk, he could so, windmill yeah, dunk. <laughs> um, so that's amazing. But what surprised me was was his his skill level. You know, sometimes, and you see it at all levels, like basketball and football kind of share athletes and football translates to basketballs. But usually football players that play basketball are like the athletic enforcer, defender types that, that hustle. He's got real skills. Like, uh, it makes me wonder if he dedicated all, all of his time to basketball growing up. He would have been a college basketball player for sure. Maybe even a Division One basketball player. I mean, I think he's that good. Um, I think, you don't think he could play in the NBA? I mean... Ah, man, NBA's tough, especially yeah. at that size. You know, at 5'9", yeah. it, it, it's tough, man. I mean, you have to realize the percentage of players that play in the NBA. Like, And then the percentage of people under six feet is like, how many people? How yeah. many people are 5'9", yeah. ever? Yeah. Yeah. Few, a handful. There's very few players that play in, in the NBA. But maybe he could have played, you know, professional overseas. Yeah. Who knows? He's a freak athlete. Yeah, maybe he, if no, he dedicated yeah. all his time, maybe he would have been an NBA player, but he's a legit a uh, basketball player that came about with just uh, a dm um i saw that he was playing locally in the area in in miami and this is before he had signed to the dolphins so when he was still with the chiefs is when he first played yeah. at at courtside i randomly had not randomly i had a chief's helmet in my car and i brought it out and he I signed it, for me. it. Oh, so the man. first game we'll he played it. at courtside was against your team yeah the first game. yeah and i know his uh agent um very well uh, yeah. He was a friend of mine, and it was just like random. Like we just, I was supposed to meet him that week for a meeting. Yeah, I uh, remember. I remember he's that. A cool one. dude, bro. Super cool Super guy, nice guy. Very humble. I played against him one time. He had like forty something on us. And you know he's just really he's like a uh, he's like a people person he's a, he's you know? a cool dude yeah. people yeah. person super humble will go ball like anywhere like he's yeah. not about the the fame and, and yeah. he's not big being time big time anymore. but then he's then, a kid right he's he's a kid like he's like us man all of us just want to relive like those yeah. feelings of being a kid and having fun you know? he actually shouted us out recently on a YouTube video he was in a sneaker shop and uh, they were talking a little about basketball he gave us a shout out every now and then I'll hit him up and and, and send him a text I think he's traveling right now but. When he signed to the Dolphins, I'm like, this is perfect. Everybody thought that I was part of the recruiting process of getting him to come <laughs> to go, man, the Miami good. Dolphins. So I'm like, yo, I have. I we got to get more Dolphins out here, bro. Yeah. Some of these guys are real. Well, Waddle played a couple times at Courtside. Jalen Waddle. So he, he's get... a baller, too. He played He played high school basketball um, where, where he was from, and, and he was a, a good player. Uh, so he's played as well. Um, Cole Har Hardman got the game-winning uh, touchdown in the Super Bowl this year. Tyreek brought him that second time that he came over, so he played a game. Um, so, so give me a list of like the celebrities or ex-NBA players or ex-athletes or current athletes. Give me a list of you know prominent athletes that have played at courtside off the top of your head. Yeah, so we have uh, obviously Tyreek Hill, Carlos Arroyo, Keith Bogans, uh, Robert Height, uh, Jack McClinton, which is, was a legend at, at the University of Miami, one of the best players that come out of there, drafted by the Spurs, and then and then got hurt. Um, so didn't have a long NBA career, but was drafted in the NBA. Um, in terms of celebrities, we've had um, Nicky Jam, who okay. will come, come around a lot. Dude, amazing, amazing person. Like Just his vibes are, are great, super respectful, super down-to-earth. We've had Osuna. Um, Osuna is actually a baller as well. He gets buckets. Man, he's super I mean, competitive too. He super talks, man, man, shit. talks uh, uh, super skilled. That like, was at the Team PR. Team yeah. PR. Team PR yeah. was dominating for a while. 
Oh, yeah. They're still dominating the world champion. Shout out to their GM, David uh, Bolsillo. Uh, Amazing guy. He's kind of the plug that that brings um, these guys. But just a great guy has assembled his team, and they've won, I think they're like at five championships uh, now. So Osuna came, but Osuna has like a real feel for the game, an IQ, like ball handling, shooting, his mid-range game, using ball screens. He's, He's tough, small, but tough, fiery, competitive. Um, person, we've had Jimmy Butler come through and watch. hasn't played uh, yet. I'm sure. So I was gonna, I was gonna ask you about that. Jimmy Butler shows up to courtside during the finals. That's crazy. During the finals. During the and finals. Then, and then the 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 crazy part is that we. But wait, the how Eastern did Conference that happen? Final. Well, so we were up three zero on the Celtics. They had a day off. Jimmy Butler comes watches a game at courtside. The Celtics win the next three games. I remember. So it was about to be called the courtside curse if we would have lost that series. So Jimmy Butler's cousin, um, Marquise Grayson, plays at courtside. So that that's his, his yeah. blood cousin. So he played. Uh, he happened to play that day after Game Three of the Eastern Conference Finals that we won. So um, I think he was playing like an eight thirty game at courtside. And when I pulled up like at five to get ready for the night of games, there was like a couple securities like in the parking lot, like security guards dressed in like all black. And I'm like, what's this about? So um, I asked him like, hey, what's up? He's like, are you the owner of this league? I'm like, yeah. He said, all right. Uh, So, you know, Jimmy Butler's coming uh, later on. I'm like, all right, is he coming now? Like, no, he's coming for the 830 game. But we got to make sure that this is a safe environment, that everything's good for him to come through. Where is he going to sit? So we had to come through, go through like a whole procedure of like 15, 20 minutes to go over the plan. That's incredible. That's awesome. Yeah, he ended up pulling up with a hat, a hoodie on. The you big face it. coffee. Yeah, yeah the, the big face I, coffee. I went to go look for it to buy it online. Yeah. Um, I think he was in playoff mode, so he was a little bit yeah. like, to himself. They didn't want to be bothered. But the good thing about courtside is celebrities feel comfortable there because we we make sure that they have an experience where it's smooth and it's not just being bombarded with pictures and, and yeah. autographs. So they feel like I could come here, be a part of the community, but it's a chill environment. So he pulled up, man. He he sat there, watched his cousin play, went out to the back and, and had a good experience. Jorge Masvidal pulled up last se- two seasons ago, right? Yeah, for a championship. For East Havana for a championship game, yeah. which was a rivalry. The gym packed was packed gym. against better. Um, which is Jake Paul's organization. They have a team of their you gotta employees. You got to get Jake Paul out there. Got to get him out there. So he, uh, uh, Masvidal was super cool. He pulled up. He's awesome. Was, was talking to the fans, whatever, and then, you know, ended up leaving. So we had him. And then the next celebrity that's rumored to come through, I don't know when, is Anuel. So oh, I, wow. I, Anuel will be pulling up. Hopefully this season. That's but team for sure, PR. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. This guy's got so many stars. Future. No, but I, Team I, PR, I mean, surprisingly, they do have very good ballers, man. Yeah, I they mean, have like, ballers. These yeah, guys yeah. play every single day. Yeah. And... They play every day religiously. Yeah. Every day, every like, day. religiously. Every single day in an di- undisclosed location, I obviously can't say, but that's what they do. Like, that's their exercise. So, Nicky Jam and his entourage, they play, when I say every day, like, they'll fly in right now to Colombia and they're going to find a court. Play ball. They'll yeah. fly into Spain, their first thing off the private play jet. Ball. Let's find a spot. That's to phenomenal. Play I would love. I mean, if I could play basketball, all day okay. Now, uh, really I got a question. Got to put a court here somewhere. Man. I got yeah, a I question for both of you. If you guys could bring in one celebrity from Miami <laughs> to play at courtside, who would you bring and why? Ollie Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, a good one. Uh, celebrity from like born and raised, born and raised, born and in raised Miami. Miami. They got. They could either. I mean, obviously, we would want Jimmy Butler. Maybe, yeah, yeah, like the typical one. Maybe it's one. a baseball player. Maybe it's a well, rapper. Like, who, I who will. Would you... I will show I... love and respect. Go. My my vote is a guy that I I used to train his his stepson and oh, have met him man. personally. Very very good dude. Played basketball at South Miami back a, in the day as an OG. That's a good pick. But Mr. Three Hundred Five Pitbull is yeah, probably yeah. That, that's that's. But he has to come. That'll be yeah, awesome. he's he has to come. Yo, he, Bro, was, he was a baller back in the day. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I mean, he's missing worldwide now. Too, yeah, 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 yeah. He put uh, down for the city. Bro, I honestly, I think I got to go a different route. I would love to see like. A DJ Khaled come play oh, ball with us or something, yeah, that'll be or awesome. like even like a Rick Ross, you that'll know, come play dope. ball. I that'll would be. like to see like Rick Ross put a video that they shooting and stuff. Bro, having him pull up the court side and play ball with that'll his boys, awesome. that would be you interesting. Know? You know? One of my goals, I mean, I think it'll be a goal for him too. I would love to have like a all celebrity division, like just yeah, these guys playing each yeah. other, getting good content and just having a good time, bro. Playing, 
Because every time it's All Star Weekend and you have those celebrity games, you want to see like, yeah. okay, who can ball, who's not that good, and do you, do, have you been have you thought about doing an All Star like game at courtside, like having a, an All Star selection? Um, I think it goes back to our foundation of competitiveness, and if you know, I mean, you see it in the NBA, but if you're familiar with All Star games, it becomes a yeah, you're right, zero defense, just. Oh, yeah highlights and we're anti that like if if you don't go to courtside and compete and play hard you get exposed we'll put you on some type of list but we're built off of like because the only way you're gonna have fun is by competing and earning stuff right so that the also we've had a three-point contest we've had a dunk like contest um maybe we do a skills challenge maybe we do an all-star selection where it's like a because we've had a king of the court battle where it's a one-on-one uh games which has been really cool Maybe we do like an all-star. There just has to be something attached to it to make these guys play hard. Yeah, nobody right. wants to see these guys uh, dap yeah. each other up and yeah. let them go we make want, a layup. We want matchups. We want yeah. people to go. And also, honestly, honestly I think an unintended consequence of that could be that they become friends and they end up just doing a team themselves. Yeah. yeah. You know, that could happen too. Right. Um, Some tampering. Yeah. That, that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I have a question for you because it happens in my in my group chat with my league, et cetera. Um, but I've always wondered from the business side, how difficult is it to structure that courtside schedule, man? Oh my it God. is um, nearly impossible. And to when I say impossible, I say impossible to please everybody. So the way we do it is a little bit different. And the way we're able to get so uh, many teams and cater to so many people is because you have to provide 10 time slots that you could play. So a lot of leagues, how they've done it in the past and still do it is like, if you want to play in the elite division, you play Mondays. If you want to play in the rec division, you play Tuesday. What happens with that is you might have an elite player that in their schedule they could only play on a Tuesday, right? Yeah. So in order to keep that person in the league, because we want to be able to bring as Came many people them, yeah. as possible, then they have to play in rec. And then before you know it, the divisions are in balance yeah. and it doesn't make a good experience. Good point. So we have a huge puzzle, right? So it's 114 teams with 10 different time slots, but then you could only play within your division. So it becomes complex, especially later on in the season when certain teams already have played other teams, right? So, And then the, the part that's hard is when teams get scheduled within their request and then they want to switch it because they got somebody out of town. So, yeah. um, you know, luckily I have a, a team of people that ha- I've disconnected myself from the scheduling, right? So I could focus on other things within the business. But we have a team of three people that dedicate their time to doing it. Um, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, no, I can only imagine because it no, happens to us. You got people that could only play Wednesdays and early. So then all those other games they can't play. But then they, you want to schedule somebody, they could only play late and then on Saturdays. So it's like so difficult to please everybody and set up good matchups because the reason why we're such a good league we don't want no blowouts, no 50-point blowouts. Yeah, which so, hardly ever happens. Hardly man. ever. You know? So every division is pretty fair play, even competition, and then we match up the best teams with each other so we can have the best games possible. So it's hard to get everybody on the same boat. We got to text each other, yo, can you guys play at this time? Can you yeah. – no switches for Friday, and then we got to switch a Friday team to play on a Tuesday – it's, it's really it gets hard. back to to the point of reinvesting into the business and everyone thinking that a CEO of a company that's doing well is rich. Where it's like we could easily say, "Hey, Monday's this division, Tuesday's this division." Make it easier for you, right? And maybe have an automated system where a computer just generates yeah. a schedule. But we put a lot of money back into having a team of three people to be like, "You guys handle the schedule. We try to make it as perfect as possible." So that everybody could play. Yeah. Because so. if not, there's a lot of people that, hey, I can't play in that league. My yeah. division only plays Wednesday. Which you don't want that. And I can't make it. Yeah, right. Yeah. So we want everybody. That limits you. But the only way we could do that is by hiring a staff. All right. So I have two questions. Fui's top five courtside players. Of all like, time? Of all time. Top five players of all time. So to form a team or just players? No, just like individual just talent individual. that you've seen. Like top five, you would say. Okay, I'm going to go. Um, and and my list is going to be based on their performances at courtside. Not so, history. So it's not going to be history like, oh, this guy. Uh, like a Keith Bogans. If we were to go top five players in courtside history, he would be one, of two, course, or three, yeah. right? But his performance at courtside has not been top five worthy. It maybe will be in the future, yeah. but he hasn't proven that. So... 
I'm going to go based on that. Um, I'm, I'm going to obviously have Arroyo in it because although Arroyo's in his 40s and retired, he's still a baller putting on a show every time he steps out. So Arroyo will be in it. I got to go with uh, Eddie Buckets because he's probably the all-time leading scorer in courtside. He's put up 60 points against us. Yeah, yeah <laughs> constantly. Like every game, he must be averaging over 30, and he plays on three teams a season. He's got four or five championships. I think he's got like five. No. Yeah. yeah. He's a winner because some people could drop 40 and lose, but this guy wins. Clutch. Uh, who else do you got? I'm going to go uh, probably Derek Hill, although he hasn't played as many seasons. He did win a championship. Just a dominant player in terms of like, he he played at at South Miami High School, played at FIU, played at Barry, transferred to Barry, was one of the best players to ever play at Barry University, um, and then was a baller at court, was dominant for over seasons. Um, so that's three. That's three. I'm gonna go his cousin, Eric Nottage, which young Hefe, young Hefe played a a, a handful amount of games or like i would say maybe maybe 15 to 20 games but absolutely dominated like the type of guy you got to go out and watch play he's playing overseas right now which is why he can't play as much here he's a guard played at fiu as well i think played at northwestern high school probably averages 50 a game at course and it's 15 20 i saw him and Derek hill they both combined for 110 points two guys 70 and 40 Young Hefe oh, had 70 yeah. and Derek had 40. Yeah. How do you beat those guys? I also got to give a shout out to a good friend of mine, um, Quincy Doobie, former NBA player. I didn't mention him. He played on my team, but he probably played three or four courtside games. Knee started flaring up, didn't play, but former NBA player, Rucker, he's from New York originally. Rutgers Hall of Fame, one of the best players to ever play at Rutgers University, got drafted in the lottery by the Sacramento Kings, then got traded to Toronto and then had a really good uh, career overseas. Played at Corte with me, known him for for years. Used to train him actually, like skill development stuff when he was still playing overseas. If he had like an extensive amount of games at Corte, he would have been one of the best because one of the best shooters I've seen, yeah, me, like automatic. Sure. And who's uh who's your fifth guy? Oh man, Josh Mel was really good. Josh Mel was good. Josh Mel was really good. Um, Eddie Reels was good. Eddie Reels. Eddie Reels yeah, Shout out to up. Eddie Reels as Eddie well. Reels nice. played. One of the OGs hasn't played in a while. Legend here at Miami High. Yeah. Uh, University of Miami. I, I, I work with his brother. His brother has uh, Lemon Date. Yeah. Mikey. Oh, yeah. Super Mikey. cool guy. He's been here in the office. Yeah, I know yeah. that guy. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. We grew up playing with that guy all of our lives. Well, Eddie Reels was my neighbor growing up. My backdoor neighbor was Eddie Reels. That's so, crazy. yeah, it's, it's crazy. But, uh, and Legend. court, do you see courtside? I know you have like. How, how does the Hall of Fame? Do you have a, a, a selection? Oh yeah, selection and you yet, just or? gave me my fifth, Dwayne James. Dwayne James. Dwayne James is a champion in multiple uh, teams, so he's the only Hall of Famer. Hall of Fame goes. Do we have set credentials yet? No, but we have a feel for what it takes. You obviously have to play for a long period of time, right? Championships is number one. You could average a hundred points a game if you've never won a championship. You're not in the conversation. Somebody that's never won but always plays with his boys that are not on his level is courtside Dirk, is what we call him, Luife. Is he going to be in Uh, the Hall of Fame one day? I think he's going to win a championship because the guy could play till he's 150 years old because of his game. He's in his, he must be what, 45 now? 43? He's probably like 42, 43. 43. Um, but plays like Dirk Nowitzki. He's just going to shoot over. I've seen he's like him. Six, five. He's right. good. He's good. Really good. Smooth. Super smooth. So he's somebody that qualifies for the Hall of Fame. He just got to get a, a championship. But So no rings, no Hall of Fame. Like, come on. I, yeah. don't, I don't think that's fair. It's your league, obviously. But look, uh, Charles Barkley. That guy's a Hall of Famer. No rings. There's people with no rings good point. that I think should be Hall of Fame. Dirk, so for these, me. These are, are the conversations we put yeah, in. This, the is, this is part that's of the important. committee. That's Dirk, important. for the me. committee makes a. That guy. Drops forty. But when do you select a person to go to the Hall of Fame? Yeah. After how many seasons? Why is made, DJ? You know? Why is DJ Correct. in the That's Hall of what Fame? We gotta, so, DJ, so minimum ten seasons to play. So DJ gonna... retired two seasons ago. Said I'm done playing basketball. He just started us with again. Then. He started playing with us now again. And yeah. now he's back. He's he back. pulled a Jordan where he came yeah, back. Yeah, he's right? back. So he, he tripped us. We thought he was done. He got in the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Yeah. <laughs> and then he came back. It's a glitch. So we're yeah. taking him out or he stays there? No, no. He'll, he's going to stay. But look, he, he's playing in, in, in the rec 30 and over division now. Yeah. How well, many rings so. does he have? He's got like four rings. So, yeah, he's got uh, rings Sobe. with Sobe Fabrics. He's got a, a good amount. What with amount. TFB? He, 
TFB. He won one with Leo's Pizza as well. So he's won championships in three different teams. Um, an OG and and bucket getter, just an overall uh, really good player. He fit the criteria perfect. So now he came yeah. back. That's a good question. We don't know. Maybe we could leave it up to vote. Should you yeah. be able to be an active player in the Hall of Fame, or do you have to retire? Um, yeah, I don't think that's ever happened in any league. Has it? No, what? I don't know. Somebody like goes to the Hall of Famer. LeBron's they obviously a Hall of Famer, but he's not in he's it yet. In, yeah, you got to retire. The problem, problem is, is that, these that you kids don't, are so young. You don't know, like, yeah. You, like, when is Eddie Buckets going to retire? Right. So, Eddie Buckets is, and, and not only that, That's since, a good point. since That's it's. A good point. So, like, you get somebody like Eddie Buckets, right? He's obviously in the elite division, all, all the divisions, but in the elite, he's an yeah. well, effective player, right? So, when he's 50 years old, there's still going to be a division for him. So a lot of these guys may not retire until they're. Yeah, we have guys playing at sixty five years old. So do you like put you in the Hall of Fame early? Forty years, like, right? Like his numbers: Eddie Buckets, five rings, most points ever scored. No, he's a Hall of Famer already. He's yeah. the first ballot Hall but of Fame. But he fame. might have to unless he pulls a Dwayne James and retires. retires just yeah. out of season, That's gets it. in. That's it. Hey, I'm retired, yeah. guys. You know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't then, know. It's a tricky uh, question. A question for for best that you see us play uh, yeah. after. I think uh, if we see the play. What do you think about the current Adea Miami team and our chances of winning the championship? Okay. I think you should have won it last year because uh, if you have the full team with Keon, Bogans, and Carlos, I don't think I think you guys could have beat that team. Obviously, Carlos got hurt. But this season, you're my boy. I'm going to be real yeah. with you. If you lose with this team, brother. I know. It's going to be bad. It's going to gonna, be bad. What's the difference? What's the difference? Robert Height, Chris Carter. Oh, because Ant- Robert High hasn't played. Anthony yeah. Shabazz. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Miro. Yeah. Steve, Steve Miro. Miro. You know, that's, team. That, that, those four guys are another Hoopers team. Like, yeah. that's already another yeah. elite team. No, we're trying to win. And and they got KT. That guy's I mean, nasty. KT, yeah. Yeah. No, no. You guys are for sure the favorite. Do if you, you don't have win, Kia? it's a bust. You still have Kia? Yeah. I mean, bro. Yeah. The the thing that happened last year, you guys rarely had a full team yeah. every but the single reason day. Why, haven't but had listen, it now either. But yeah. listen, the reason why we did that is because of that point exactly. that these players sometimes have other stuff to do. Yeah. So we said, I'd rather have, you know, yeah, eight, nine active players so we can fill in For instead sure. of having a small core, you know. So what we do now in the chat is game is this day, Who's first up? five or first six that respond, yeah. go, you know. Yeah. Right, right. That's a good so, idea. From me, from my perspective, you're the best team. Now you got to win it. Yeah, we got to win You got that. the best players. You got pros. You got height. Listen, you got shooters. You got I everything. Think, I think that the two things for you guys is availability and health. I think if a Royal is able to stay healthy, I think you guys will win it. Um, if he's not and with the availability, I'm going to go if I have to bet my money that you guys will not win it. Oof. That would be my bet. Damn. Wow. Can you win it? Of course. I think you guys That's are the tough. favorites. I just think there's too many factors. And then when you have eight or nine guys, right? The for the time. championship, you want all them all to show up, right? Well, really like, the thing is that like you're time. getting everybody's best. Like, we noticed of it. Of course. Oh when you're God. playing a team, bro, they want to say, I beat, I beat Arroyo. X, Arroyo and XMBA right. players, you know? But sure. I think then in the playoffs, you're naturally going to want to get all these guys. Of course. Instead of the first five or six, and you're going to bring all of them. And then the rotations exactly. get messed up. So we've seen this. So, no, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if you won. But, again, if I had to bet, I will say no. What would you say? I I, I think they will win it, bro. Young team, because they yeah, almost yeah. won it without a royal. Yeah. What was the What was the final score of that game? It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that much. We were like, Imagine, like six so points. So if a royal wins, now Ryan. he's gonna have Robert Height. He's gonna have KT. I mean, he's got Tony. more weapons. Tony's you going because look, you might last have year too nothing many. against. Not, you might have too many. I understand, but look, right? So there's addition by subtraction. You get five of your best ballers at mesh. But you know, I'll tell you though. Yeah, so but a lot of the players in the team, they're not like. Yeah, but they're not. They're they're pros. They know how to play yeah. together. Like imagine replacing Ryan Cosio. Nothing against him. He's my friend. But putting Robert Height. No, no, it's a game changer. But putting. KT. But listen, going it's back to Ryan, better. Ryan is no, no, no. an award winning, a Hall of Fame. A, that guy plays uh, hard. Bro. Manager, GM, yeah, whatever yeah, you want. Yeah. We talk about it all the time. We look at the teams that we've built and stuff like that, and we're like, bro, we've won championships with three different teams. Yeah. Which was the Splash Bros that went undefeated. Uh-huh. And we had a terrible team. I don't even know how we nah, won. No, that team wasn't that bad, bro. You guys had like some NFL dude, the the cornerback Jay. guy. We had Jay, yeah. That guy was had, good. Yeah, but he, no, no. But Jay's a freak, freak athlete. Yeah, he's coming nasty. back too. Very good shooter. Yeah, Jay yeah, is yeah. coming back to the damn Miami team. Bro, he's just yeah. playing pro pro in, in Japan right now. Oh, he really? told me, imagine him at I think Royal you guys have too much talent. That's my... Yeah, we'd have to split two teams. Like, I could do two I, teams. No, I think you have too much talent this season. Like, I think, how you guys match is going to be? Like, like, uh, and by the way, 
Ryan could go to the Hall of Fame as a GM. Yeah, of course. It's of not course. only players. He's got rings. Saying. So we have that. We have the Splash Bros team that were undefeated. We have the Lifestyle Miami teams that we they, had. They for won two. Years. We won two. And, and we had a, a, a 16, 18 game win streak. Yeah. I don't know if that's the longest game streak in the in, in win streak in the. Them and injury uh, hub was really yeah. Close. Injury hub went far, I believe. We went three seasons. We yeah, spent yeah, there yeah. three seasons there. No, our, our awesome, history. awesome organization. You guys, like I said, are are not only OGs, but you guys have been able to build sustained yeah. success with some rocky times with because a, of a the very guys. Rocky you. time. We had some, we had to let go of friends in the in the season and during the season. Make. Cuts. And we made we made a run that season. Yeah, we, I'm not sure we made a run that that deep. I would have but, to. But uh, and these are people that we we go out with our friends. We go to drink with them yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, people yeah. get it. Gets emotional, man. No, you gotta like, make some. Tough that's tough what decisions. I love about about Corset, man. Now I play on a team called Miracle Leaf. These guys picked me up, but four or five of my teammates I've known since high school. And we reconnected. So now after the games, we're going to Flanagan. It's beautiful. We're I try to, to do that all the time. Social, Building camaraderie social. is very important. We're working out team. together. Right. We're putting up shots. We're sending tape to everybody. And it's like, you know. No, they like, have practices. and everything. We have practices. Yeah. And we have, we're one of the only teams. We have three different uniforms. Obviously, I have my company, Basu Customs. And so we have a black, we have a white, and we have a green. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about that because – uh, you, you, you see a lot of these like, you know, printing companies out there and stuff like that. I've worked as a marketing agency. Yeah. You can ask all the people out there. It's terrible. You never find someone who is like, um, consistent or who actually like, you know, does what they say, you know, yeah. uh, all these people just, you know, me working with you and, and, and as nice as you've been to us, Besu is actually a sponsor of the Day in Miami uh, basketball team. For sure, And baby. it was his idea because we had some jerseys. He, he called me. He's like, bro, these things are kind of yeah, bad. Yeah, you have some very goes, generic yeah. jerseys that, honestly, with the type of platform Correct. that you have, you guys got to look the part. I agree bro. with you. So when I, I offered to give you guys some nice uniforms, and they came right on time for playoffs. Incredibly fast. You designed them. I just made them, put them together. So I really take pride in, in like, kind of what you do, like build brands. Like, yeah making teams look the part because with your registration fee, like Fui says, you're going to get the court side jersey. There's obviously a package where now I could provide something for you guys. So I like to customize stuff. I like to create the designs for people to really look their best. Well, that, and you feel like, yeah, you know, like this is, legit. This is, this is you official, feel like a team, you know. You know? Like nothing yeah. against the court side jerseys, no, you know. No, I have no, that. You get no. to the parks and stuff yeah, for no sure. branding for the, for the league yeah. and stuff. But uh, when you have your own jerseys, you wear it proud, you know? Of yeah, my pet peeve is when teams win a championship and they come back the next season and they still have the courtside jerseys. It's like, yeah, no, man. you need your custom. What, what the best thing I, I want to do. Giles is they got the trophies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've been wanting that. to do that. You guys got to do that. that. I've been, it's been the that. same management. So you could put even, the, like, from Splash Bros. You yeah, could put yeah, all yeah. The we wanted to. I, just, I don't know if to, like, get them printed or get a patch. I guess it's a patch. You guys should sell those patches there or something. Bro. People would buy them and you just iron it on, I yeah. think. You know? One thing that I, I was already talking with Fui about and to build my brand, I think what I'm going to do this season, I'm going to I'm gonna give these championship teams uniforms. So yeah. if That's you, a great idea. If you win the championship, you're getting free uniforms yeah. for the next season because some of these teams don't have uniforms and they deserve some. And then we have a lot of, I don't know, I don't know if it's luck, but a lot of the teams that wear Basu Customs, they win, bro. They yeah. have, okay, they have a lot of, yeah. they, win, uh, they, they win a lot of games. Maybe they officiating. They get a little couple <laughs> yeah, extra calls. Yeah, yeah, right. You get some extra calls. <laughs> no, yeah. but for real, you look good, you play good, and it's just, we got to do, a, we got to do like a bracket of who's got the best uniforms. Yeah, we could do that. That's pole. a good one. That'd be Because I like, one. I like those blue lifestyle ones that you made. Those I like the, the Miracle Leaf the, green ones. The green are, yeah. awesome. Those are They Miami ones now are dope. Those are dope. I like those are dope. Yeah. So, yeah. When I showed it to the team and they're like, bro, amazing. No, and what I, I love like, the black mix of that, that blue and yeah. yellow is awesome. So, so this is a company, like my family makes them in Ecuador. So when I send them pictures of Osuna. Of Nicky Jam and my stuff, they're like, "Yo, no Except way! How do you do that?" So then I'm I'm getting a bunch of people wearing to rock your brand to wearing my to wearing my logo, my brand. I'm taking pictures with them. So well, there's nothing better than that, man. It's like, awesome. Doing a bro. good job, you yeah. Know, being around people who are doing good work and stuff like that, and you see like things happening in front of you, you know, like yeah, organically too, not even like forced. I so think, I think what what you need to get into too is. And my team was, we were called brothers. We haven't gotten back together, but it was my brothers but and, and great friends. I remember playing Tyree, against you. You yeah. went off one time, bro. Yeah. Like 45 points. That's when Tyreek Hill played. You were shooting from half court. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, how are you going to cover this guy? You know. So I, And what we did was we had uh, warm-up shirts. So like 
any team, like the Heat, they got gear mm-hmm. that they wear mm-hmm. outside, right? So so we had like the warm up shirt, we had a sweatpants, we, we had a track sweat. suit. Yeah, we had, listen, we had, if we you can do suit. something like this yeah, for a I team for us, bro, I, I made oh, this. Awesome. I make oh, all the court side match. So I'll you play, that. and then after you go to Flanny, even some then, hats like that. Yeah, exactly. I got this. Yeah, hats, uh, hoodies, so shorts. I, everything. It's not only so. My company is not only sports uniforms. We do casual wear. Like I'm, I'm a vendor for the school system. I work got for you. forty different schools. I do their uniforms for the kids. For the staff, for everybody. We do from hoodies, hats, socks, bags, everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So for you guys, the day in Miami, I could make, look, I made these hoodies. The girls like them. Championship shirts. Championship oh, shirts. I love that. I'll get that. Hoodies. We'll get we do bomber jackets. We do whatever you guys want. We so. need a shirt for them that says Dynasty with the trophies. Yeah. Day yeah, in Miami yeah, yeah, yeah. with the Splash Bros, all that. You yeah, guys yeah, got yeah, rock. Dope. Bro, me and Ryan talk about it all the time. And then we're like, bro, he was like, I think we should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. I was like, listen, I think I'm, 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 I'm listen, I, I want to make something clear for everybody too. I barely play in the teams, but you you're have the, that guy. You're the UD though. Correct, bro. You're the guy who just brings the team together, brings the Gatorades. Like, it's all about being <laughs> yeah, the, the player on the team and knowing your role. Winning champions is important to know your role. Of course. You know, and I have no uh, capability to be on that court with these guys. You know, and I know that, but I, you know, I play great. But being around them and being able to be a part of that has actually taught well, me a and, lot, you and, know? And I want to give you thanks because without you, we don't have these players, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't know. You know my dad, right? Yeah. yeah. My dad's the old guy. He goes yeah, to all the games. Yeah, he loves that shit. This guy tells shit. me every day, Oye, cuando juega Arroyo? Yeah. Cuando juega oh, he loves yeah. it. So yeah. And he, that's been a team effort, man. Me, Ryan, Steve, like all of us, bring, creating that environment for people to want to, you know, come to the course. team and stuff too. Yeah. You know, like we're very serious about what we do. The way we manage it. Um, what I do want, my only request is for next season to have your elite team and then also have a rec or a C-league team where you're starting. Bro, listen, I've been dying balling. to do that, Yo, but, but I haven't been able to get players, bro. I go to my Lago Mar Park and I put a chat. I have like 40 people in the chat. Who wants to do a rec team? You know, I'll play with them. You know who's a baller too? Yuli. Yuli, oh, yeah? that guy is a baller. Back oh, in the days, yeah. he used to ball. Look, you, you, Yuli, you, Ryan, Juice, your producer, uh, producer, producer Ben, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> he fucked up his knees playing volleyball. No, but for real. But listen, I'm down no, to do that. I've been get... dying to do that. I've been dying listen, to do that. Listen, and we have we have the 30 and over division that that I have a team in the rec 30 and over. We have C League 30 and over. There's divisions for everything. Listen, so, I got off the bench once and I went. I shot like for 16 course. points. You know, that, that's what I'm saying. I bro, want you to play, be a C. Yeah, I, play, I, play. I want you to be C to. League. Yeah, uh, C League All Star game. If you go in C League, we'll have an officer. Yeah, bro, I'll, go, I'll go to the C League. That's where I belong, man. But I'll probably ball out. Man. Maybe you don't oh, belong there. But no, maybe but you don't. Hey, listen, like people out. think that court side court is small. Yeah. Uh, running up and down that thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. You gotta man, have you cardio. You get gassed bro. out. You get cardio. For I do sure. half court every weekend it's for different. six hours. It's way I don't different. get tired. I go to court side. I get tired there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. And you're putting effort, you know, you're putting yeah, effort, you're boxing out and shit. No, the stakes are higher. Yeah. For sure, the stakes are higher. Boys. A real pleasure. I think it would be awesome to have you guys come back too, maybe even with some other players and stuff, and, and talk about it. Um, I, I mean, I could talk to you for for a long time. Uh, this conversation I've been wanting to have it for a long time in a more professional fashion. Right. And thank you guys for coming. Thank, thank you, man. Thanks for the invite. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you, brother. Right. That was a lot of fun. Listen, I, was, I think that was the longest podcast we've had.